and welcome back to Invisible Nightmares, where this time we're going to be looking into more of a haunted system than anything else, that'd be the best way to put it. Uh, by that, we all know what a haunting is, so quite possibly something or someone got in there, and now they're just making a complete ruckus of it. So, I hope you enjoy that, and I will see you for a special note at the end. I'll never ask for anything else again, I swear, Mom! As kids, we've all said this at one point. We find something that seems the most amazing item in the world, and we just have to have it, no matter what. For me, it was the newest handheld, a Game Boy Color. It was the most beautiful thing to a six-year-old, especially when all of my friends were getting theirs. Growing up with four brothers and sisters, and not especially well off, my parents did their best, but we struggled to get by most of the time. They did their best to give us comforts and toys, but new electronics were out of the question. We were still working off an old television that used the rabbit ears. I was the youngest of the five of us, so it meant a lot of hand-me-downs as well. I was used to it, but still held some resentment to my siblings, and of course, still begged for the Game Boy Color. They said they would do their best. Bless their hearts. Shortly after my birthday, my mom and dad presented me with a box. I was surprised, but they said they had found something they knew I'd wanted very badly, and I'd been good. My heart raced with excitement as I tore into the box, but sank into the pit of my stomach. It was not a Game Boy Color. This poor excuse for a handheld was a badly abused original Game Boy. It looked like it had been bitten and melted by something in the corners, as well as stained. Up on the top, a strange camera stuck out of the cartridge inserted inside. When I picked it up, it read, Game Boy Camera. They managed to find some of the crappy little printer as well, complete with fading printer paper. You see, Daddy and I found it at a garage sale. It's exactly the kind you wanted. It even has a cool little camera to take pictures, they said, far more excited than I was. I'm not sure if it was the fact that this was the first thing that had ever been given to me first, and it still was someone's old used piece of junk, or that they had no actual idea what I'd wanted, or maybe they just decided it was too much so a replacement would suffice, and I'd never know the difference. But in my utter disappointment, I threw the worst tantrum I'd thrown since I was a toddler. I tossed the box on the ground and cried my eyes out screaming about how awful they were, and that I didn't want this, and I wanted my Game Boy Color. Well, you can imagine how that turned out. I got a good whooping from my father in front of all of my siblings, and a long lecture on gratefulness and how hard they had worked to get it. As a punishment for my selfishness, they gave my gift to my older brother, Ryan, who was only a couple years older than I was. I was so angry that I didn't care and was just happy to be rid of that thing. Ryan, being the jerk that he was, teased me about it endlessly. It was a few days after that that he figured out how the camera and printing worked. He would tease me with his room about how he got to play with the cool system and how I was too little and bratty to ever touch it. I would either yell back at him or slam the door to my room and ignore him. Shortly after that, though, I heard him leave his room and call out to our mom, claiming that the printer was acting... weird. She was busy making lunch and told him it was probably due to being used and to keep trying to see if it would fix itself. I heard him go back to his room and then go back out a little while later, saying it was probably busted and he was just going to go to his friend's house. Wondering what was wrong with it, I snuck into his room and found the papers lying on his bed. He'd taken photos of himself making weird faces into the camera. The game system had been turned off as expected, and the first few pictures were normal. Then they changed into those strange faces that everybody knows about. 
the way the printer paper was stained, they looked even weirder. And I looked at the later pictures, and they looked very different. Obviously, the camera in the game was not the greatest, and it was sometimes hard to see details of someone's face, or they would just look blocky or blurry. The later pictures, however, seemed to change. It wasn't just scribbles or silly words written on his face, his features themselves seemed to change. And there were some dark spots around his eyes and mouth. His expression didn't look goofy anymore, and instead it looked scared. Each picture seemed to change it more and more. Eventually the pictures changed to where it didn't even look like he was holding the camera, but that someone was taking pictures of him. He got farther and farther away and seemed to be in a horrible story that was unfolding. It was showing Ryan running from the camera. The last picture showed Ryan's face, half of it missing, and dark pixels spilled out from the side of his head and just lay on the ground. I didn't know what to think. I didn't even know that this little camera was capable of things like this. It frightened me immensely, and I jumped from the bed and ran to my mom, telling her about the pictures. She didn't believe me and got angry I was playing with it after my behavior. She scolded me and sent me back to my room. I was too nervous to be angry, though. I wondered what was wrong with that Game Boy. Why did it print those pictures? I was immensely relieved when Ryan came back home that night for dinner. He seemed fine after that night. I convinced myself it must have been a problem with the system since it was so beaten up and just some kind of internal error. At some point later in the week, Ryan tried again to take pictures and I heard him call it a piece of junk and then chuck it into a drawer. He threw all the pictures he had taken into a trash can. I didn't think much of the Game Boy and the camera until the week after. I'd been coloring in my room when I heard a terrible scream from outside and the sound of brakes squealing to a stop. Immediately we all jumped up and ran outside to find out what had happened, along with our neighbors. The sight that greeted us all is still burned into my memory. Ryan had gone to walk across the street to a friend's house just as he would any other day. A man had come speeding down the street and hit him. He had been pulled under the car, his head half crushed under the tires, as the man hit the brakes. My older brother's brain and skull were splattered under, a pool of blood soaking into the street. I still remember the cry of agony and horror my mother let out, and the rage and grief in my father's eyes. He pulled the man out of the car and shouted at him, asking him what in the hell he had been doing when he hit a child. My sisters pulled me back inside, trying to comfort me and shield me from the sight, but the, the damage was done. I'd seen exactly what the picture had showed me. I knew the Game Boy camera had been the cause. In my naivety, I tried to tell them, hoping that they would believe me. They didn't believe me at all, and one of my sisters just fell apart. The next few weeks were miserable. My parents were inconsolable, and my mother could barely take care of the house and us. My eldest sister, Andrea, took over her role and struggled with it, angry with us and dealing with her own grief. She also took over cleaning out Ryan's side of the room that he shared with my other brother. At some point, she found the Game Boy and the Game Boy camera and asked if I'd wanted it. I told her that it was cursed and that it was what had killed Ryan. She said that I was being cruel to our parents by turning their gift that was meant for me into a guilt trip and that I needed to stop being so selfish. The funeral for Ryan caused even more financial stress on the family and slowly, even at a young age, I could see that we were not able to handle any of it well. I did my best at that point to keep out of trouble and I didn't say anything more about the Game Boy camera. I don't know when she took them, but at some point I guess she needed a distraction from trying to hold the house together. I went into my sister's room to find a missing sock that I thought had maybe landed in their clothing. Her trash can had the same printer paper in it. An ice cold sweat came over my body when I realized I couldn't stop myself. I reached in and looked at the pictures. They were the same. Andrea's face being slowly transformed into looks of horror and fear before showing her in a grotesque and terrifying position that I could only assume was a clue to how she would die. 
In the ending pictures, her face was barely recognizable and her skin was black. I was definitely sure now. This thing had to be destroyed. I thought to myself that maybe I could destroy it and save my sister from the same fate. I tore her room apart searching for the Game Boy. Eventually I found it, and the printer. As I held it in my hands, something terrifying happened. It turned on. The screen flashed the logo before it began to make noises and music. The sound was wrong, as though it were being played backwards. I had been looking straight at it, and suddenly my face appeared on screen. It began to print. In my panic state, I went to shut it off, but found that the switch was already down. It should not have been running. I then proceeded to rip the printer paper and the game out of the system. The Game Boy began to spark and error while the printer spewed ink all over Andrea's bed. I felt it heat up in my hands and dropped it, watching the screen begin to smoke and sparks fly out from both the Game Boy and the printer. After a minute or two, they both seemed to just die. Needless to say, I got in major trouble when my sister came home and found her bed sheet stained with ink and the system broken. My parents were furious and forbid me from going out with my friends at all, as well as no TV. I was now considered very irresponsible and not allowed to touch any of my siblings' things. It didn't matter, though. I had saved her from a horrible fate, and the cursed system was gone. At least... I thought so. I think back and realize that of everything that I did, the thing that may have saved me was not letting the printer finish. Six months later, my sister was killed when she was driving home and slipped on something in the road, crashing her car and becoming trapped inside as it caught fire. When the police came to my parents, they had told them that she was burned beyond recognition and the only reason they knew it was her was because she was driving my dad's car. I couldn't save her. I didn't dare tell my parents about the pictures. I don't think they would have believed me anyway. Years have passed and we've grown up. My parents never really recovered from Ryan and Andrea's death, and they struggled immensely. The three of us take care of them now, though we still have the old rabbit-eared television for comfort's sake. There's still one thought that haunts me though, and makes it hard to sleep at night. I never found out what they did with the broken Game Boy, camera, or printer. I pray every night that the thing just made its way into some kind of trash compactor, or is tangled with plastic and floating out in the ocean. What I fear, though, is that they still wanted it, may have used it, or possibly donated it, or even sold it for parts, and that someone somewhere out there is repairing it, putting in new paper and they will see just what that cursed thing was trying to print of me. Well, that was certainly interesting, wasn't it? Just a couple of things I wanted to point out from a technical aspect and side of things. One, the Game Boy camera was done on thermal paper, so there wasn't any ink. But I guess if your ink source is the blood of a demon and that's what's jammed into your system, Hmm. I guess there could be ink that way. Number two. This was written from the point of a six-year-old. At what point would a six-year-old not... Not now, phone. I'm recording stuff. At what point would a six-year-old know anything about financial troubles? I mean, yeah, they would pick up on things of, oh, huh, money is tight. But I'm pretty sure when I was six, my first thought was, oh, huh, money? <laughs> yeah. Then again, I'm also was not the most observant kid in the world. Um, at the time, I probably would have been happy with anything like that. I know I thought the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, was like the coolest thing ever. And then one Christmas, I actually got a Game Boy Color. Mine was a little translucent purple one where my sister got the solid purple one because they only came in two colors. You had solid purple or you had the clear purple and I guess they decided the clear purple is more for boys because you'd like to see the little techno stuff inside. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, was there anything else that I was thinking of? I mean, I didn't write notes or anything like that down, but at the same time, why wouldn't the kid just show the pictures? 
I mean, it's not like you could honestly doctor them or anything. You could, I guess, if you had, like, a really fine point embossing gun, but this is a family of five kids. We've clearly established they are low income. That was what I was thinking of. What was up with the rabbit ear TV? I mean, yeah, your, your TV has rabbit ears. Congratulations. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, you're picking things up off the air, so would a normal antenna. I mean, and then to bring it back up, it's like, oh, we kept it around for uh, sentimental reasons. That, that, that just didn't make any sense. Anyway, those were the little things that I saw and, point, and wanted to point out. Why would a six-year-old know anything about finances? Secondly, your system doesn't run on ink, it's thermal print, and thirdly, why the TV? Seriously. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had fun recording it. And I will throw in a couple of little weird audio hiccups that I had while doing things. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye! I was surprised. And they said they had found something that I knew I'd won. Did bad do boo. I pray that every night. Na- oh. Not now, phone. In the ending, fixture, pictures, fixtures. Come on, man.